Welcome to County Report This Week. I'm Sonia Burke. Thank you for joining us. Coming up in the next half hour, the future of this Confederate soldier statue in Rockville. And later, the Washington Spirit soccer team welcomes home its World Cup superstars. But we begin with predatory towing. It's the number one consumer complaint in Montgomery County. Over the years, hundreds of grievances have been filed with the Office of Consumer Protection. And it's become enough of an issue that this week the county council took action to put a stop to it. Susan Kennedy reports. It's possible, you know, that the tow truck was around the corner or something like that. Doug Numbers works in the County Office of Consumer Protection, and this is the type of call he answers on a regular basis. It's private property, and the property owner has a right to control their property. But thanks to new legislation, his phone may ring a little less frequently. Have a good day, ma'am. All right, bye-bye. This towing bill breaks new ground by prohibiting the use of spotters, Individuals employed by the towing companies whose primary job it is to identify a car to be towed and call the company. People used to use spotters and we are trying to put an end to that practice where you go into a particular lot and you go, oh, I need to go to the ATM. And if you literally walk outside and go to that ATM, by the time you turn around, your car could be towed. No, we're done with that. The measure amends the county's towing law to authorize the county to set flat rates for certain towing services, add certain notice and towing procedure requirements, and it provides additional enforcement powers for the Office of Consumer Protection, something Eric Friedman says is welcome news. Right now there are 5,000 tows going on in Montgomery County every month. Uh, we estimate that there are 30,000 trespass tows a year. We just think that's way too much and it's killing business. It's hurting our business districts because once you've been towed out of Bethesda or Wheaton or Silver Spring or Rockville, you will never go back. That's typically what consumers tell us. So we're hoping that we're going to create a balance here. We have to have rules, otherwise there'd be chaos, but we think that this is going to recreate the balance between enforcing restrictions and making it fair for consumers. Trespass towing, as it is sometimes referred to, can sometimes lead to confrontations that threaten public safety. You plan to fight me on this one? I'm trying to tell you right now, dude, you don't want to do this right now. It's hoped by strengthening towing regulations, the public will be safer. Yes, Mr. Hunter. Yes, Mr. Hunter. Yes, Mr. Berliner. 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 People are not at their best when their car is towed, I promise you. There's nothing more frustrating for consumers than being towed. <laughs> really feel like you've been violated, uh, your personal possessions may be in the vehicle, you've got to travel 12 miles away to reclaim your vehicle, you're not going to get the car back unless you pay the fee that they are demanding, and so nothing infuriates consumers like a towing complaint. We see that every single day. The council president votes yes on Bill 7. In Rockville, I'm Susan Kennedy for County Report This Week. It is agreed to unanimously by the council. The council Identity theft is a growing problem across the country, and it's impacting folks right here in Montgomery County, especially after the OPM data breach. That's why Congressman John Delaney recently hosted a forum on identity theft and fraud prevention at the Black Rock Center for the Arts. I want to find out if, I've, uh, if my data has actually been taken. He's not alone. Hundreds of residents turned out for this forum in Germantown to learn more about identity theft and fraud protection. Congressman John Delaney said cybersecurity is a primary concern of his constituents, many of them federal workers. It's an incredibly important part of my job is to represent federal workers. Normally I'm spending my time fighting for them to make sure they get treated fairly by the government as it relates to all that's gone on with budget matters, but now we find ourselves, you know, really worried about their uh, data security. My 20 million records of individuals. I mean, it's staggering. And unfortunately, it can happen to anyone. Just ask these experts. And it's not just uh, plain folks who get their identity stolen. My identity has been stolen. Uh, somebody filed a tax return this year in my name and my wife's name attempting to steal a refund from the United States States government. Identity theft has been the number one complaint that the Federal Trade Commission has received for over a decade. And in Maryland, your state is number six in the nation for identity theft. Over a dozen agencies were represented at this forum, from the Office of Personnel Management to the Montgomery County Office of Consumer Protection. What do you want to learn today? How I can prevent it from happening, should I be one of the unlucky OPM people? I definitely took advantage of picking up some of the literature that was here, um, just to have those at home, so if something happens, I know where to go. 
um, in terms of websites or who to call. The FTC has launched a new website to help with this growing problem. You can find more information at identitytheft.gov. So we can beat this threat. We can beat this threat with more investment by the government, with more investment by the private sector, and with greater coordination and cooperation between those two parties in ways that don't compromise our rights to privacy. County Council is getting a lot of emails from residents in Tacoma Park who are concerned about the proposed budget savings plan's impact on the Piney Branch Pool. Oh, I don't even want to talk about closing. All we're asking for is $146,000 to run the pool and $15,000 for maintenance. I like to swim here a lot, but I'm not a really good swimmer, and so I was hoping for lessons here. And if they close it, I can't have those lessons. I have a disability. I can't drive. I'm legally blind. So trying to get my kids across the county somewhere for swimming lessons is hard. <laughs> Please look at your budget and know that these kids are kids that are very needy. The council is expected to make final decisions on the county executive's recommended budget savings plan on July 28th. Slow down. There's a new speed camera in the city of Rockville. Rockville 11's Alex Cruz tells us where you need to be on the lookout. Drivers beware, there's about to be more eyes on the road. There's a new speed camera on North Horners Lane on Rockville's east side. And it's like just too many. It makes you not even really want to drive. Believe it or not, those speed cameras actually help promote safe driving and protect pedestrians. But the roads have become much safer and drivers are being much more cautious when they drive in Rockville uh, because of the program itself. So we consider it to be a very good success. And there's proof. The number of tickets issued is down. We've had a 50% reduction in the violations that have occurred and a reduction in the number of collisions, vehicle collisions that have occurred in the areas where we have photo enforcement. The money from those fines is being put to good use. It's helping repair Rockville bridges, sidewalks and street lights. For County Report This Week, I'm Alex Cruz. Coming up on County Report This Week, the future of the Confederate Monument near the Red Brick Courthouse in Rockville. And Ethiopians are Montgomery County's largest African immigrant communities, and they celebrated the heritage right here in downtown Silver Spring. That's next on County Report This Week. Swimming can be a great way to stay cool and beat the summer heat. Hi, I'm Gabe Albernaz, director of the Montgomery County Recreation Department, and I'd like to ask you to be our partner in making this a safe summer. Drowning is a leading cause of accidental deaths in children, but drowning can be avoided. By following a few important rules, we can ensure that our children are safe at the pools. Regardless of swimming ability, children should never be unsupervised. Even with lifeguards, there is no substitution for adult supervision. Minimize distractions such as cell phones. Drowning can happen in minutes. If you have to leave the pool for any reason, you need to take your children with you. Inflatable swimming aids such as floaties and noodles are not life safety devices. Do not substitute these for supervision either. By working together, we can make sure we are all safe at the pool this summer. Supporting local food production is good for the environment, the community, your health, and to create a lasting commitment to preserving agricultural land. So consider buying your fruits and veggies at a Montgomery County Farmer's Market. For a list of farmer's markets or for more information on growing local, please contact the Montgomery County Department of Economic Development at www.montgomerycountymd.gov slash farmers markets or call 301-590-2823. Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm Sonia Burke. Montgomery County is in the middle of the national debate over what to do with Confederate relics and symbols on public land. In this case, the dispute surrounds a Confederate soldier statue on the grounds of the Red Brick Courthouse in Rockville. Though County Executive Ike Leggett has decided to remove the statue, debate about its future continues. My MC Media Cindy Pena reports. Standing above a granite base with arms folded, this 100-year-old statue of a Confederate soldier is causing quite a stir. These people fought, and that's honoring them. It's very different than the flag flying, I believe, the Confederate flag in Columbia, South Carolina. The statue was first erected in 1913 and placed in front of the red brick courthouse here in Rockville. 
In 1971, it was moved to this quiet, shady spot on the side of the building, where it went largely unnoticed until now. Obviously, this is very, very important to our community as a whole. At the Rockville City Hall, there was a rare standing room only public hearing on the statue's future. If you decide to take the monument down or relocate it all together, we must still tell the history of both sides. This hearing came just a few days after a decision was made to remove the statue. I had the opportunity to have a conversation with the county executive, Mr. Leggett, this afternoon. He is very interested in people's perspectives, in our thoughts. However, as most of us know, he has made a decision to remove the statue. Regardless of where people stand, the statue debate brought personal reflections to the forefront. I agree with the president that for too long we have been blind to the pain that Confederate symbols stir in too many of our citizens. I am ashamed to admit that I was among those who have been blind. Being Jewish, I might find something objectionable that was a symbol of what went on in Nazi Germany and in Europe. Well, why isn't there also with it a statue of a slave or a statue of a Union soldier? If we are going to embrace history, then let's embrace the entire history. Though the statue is county property and sits on county land, its future is clearly important to many residents in Rockville who care deeply about how Montgomery County's role in the Civil War is remembered and told. For County Report This Week, I'm Cindy Pena. Hundreds of people turned out for the annual Ethiopian Day Festival. My MC Media's Alini Barros joins us with more. Alini? I'm in downtown Silver Spring where Ethiopian Americans gather to celebrate Ethiopians' music, tradition and heritage. Festival organizers said the goal of this event was to share Ethiopians' rich culture with Montgomery County residents. It also included actually a Jamaican reggae band uh, in that. Uh, a lot of Ethiopians relate to reggae music uh, with Bob Marley and so on, so, so we also included that. Uh, but we also have a fashion show that shows, uh, you know, the, the clothing that is, uh, uh, you know, in the countryside in different parts of Ethiopia. So there are many Americans that, are, uh, that have no familiarity. In fact, the best way to get to know the culture is by diving into its colors, music and food. I do a little research and saw that yellow was one of the colors of their flag and it means harmony and peace. This is my vegetarian uh, selection, okay. which is red lentil. Give it up, everybody. It's a little bit spicy. This Silver Spring resident, in honor of Bati restaurant, was selling some of her authentic Ethiopian cookies. Bati means my house because everybody, all my guests, is my guest, you know? My customers, my guest. I feel like I'm home. <laughs> So, you know, it's, it's, it feels so good, you know, you won't get homesick, you feel like you're around your family. County officials noted that the Ethiopian community is the largest African immigrant community in the area. Not just uh, being such a sizable community, Ethiopian Americans are among our leaders in the county at law and medicine and science, so many professions, plus just so many hardworking families that, that get up and, and contribute to our economy and create jobs every single day. For County Report this week, I'm Alini Barris. We want to remind county pet owners that all dogs and cats four months of age or older must have a current rabies vaccination and a county pet license. If your pet gets lost, a license tag on your pet's collar is the fastest way to find you when your pet is found. Lucille Bauer from the Montgomery County Police Department has more. If you're a resident of Montgomery County and own a dog or cat, this message is particularly for you. But even if you're not currently a pet owner, you probably know someone who is and Montgomery County Police want everyone's help in getting the word out about how to improve the safety of our pets and our human population. It's the law in Montgomery County that all dogs and cats kept as pets four months of age and older must have a valid rabies vaccination and a Montgomery County pet license. And that's even if you try to keep your cat indoors and your dog confined to your personal property. It's important that our pets be licensed for many reasons, but you should know that it is the fastest way for an animal services officer to return your pet to you should it become lost. And also, because you can't get a license without a valid rabies vaccination, when you get your renewal notice for the license, that means it's time to update that rabies vaccination. 
Now it is easier than ever to apply for a pet license because you can do it online. All you need is a credit card and a scan of your rabies vaccination certificate. You just go on the Montgomery County Animal Services and Adoption Center website at www.montgomerycountymd.gov slash animal services. Click on the word licensing and follow the directions. We know that our county residents care deeply for their pets and that's why we say if you love them, you'll license them. Coming up on County Report this week, we'll tell you about a business competition at Montgomery College. And there's a new summer program that's keeping local students engaged in learning. We'll have more right after this. Did you know there are more than 10,000 county government phone numbers? But there's only one number you need to remember for non-emergency calls, 311. MC311 is Montgomery County Government's online telephone information system. Need information? Have a problem or complaint? Trying to locate a county government facility? Call 311. The call center is open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. The website is available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. In Montgomery County, we have a goal to reduce waste and recycle 70% of all waste by 2020. By recycling and reducing waste, we save natural resources and make our community even better. So recycle at home, work, school, everywhere, and keep recycling going. For more information, call the Montgomery County, Maryland Division of Solid Waste Services at 311 or visit montgomerycountymd.gov slash recycling. Keep it going. Recycle more now. Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm Sonia Burke. The popular show Shark Tank has spawned business competitions nationwide. In fact, Montgomery College held one. MCTV has a story. Nearly 300 people came to the Theater Arts Arena on the Rockville campus to witness the first ever Raptor Tank, a business competition featuring participants from all three campuses. A select group of MC students pitched their business ideas to an expert panel of judges. Our judges are selected based on ones that we thought would be helpful to our students, both in providing them the knowledge and mentorship after the competition, but also in providing feedback throughout the competition in their questions and suggestions while on stage. $5,000 in prizes were given at the event. Javier Martinez and O.P. Okusi won first prize with a peer-to-peer -peer music streaming app called Get Hip and received a check for $2,500. Oh, I thought the competition was very competitive and fun. And the fact that we got to talk about our app to 300 people was just amazing. How will these young entrepreneurs spend their money? So with the prize money, we're going to put that towards legal fees. And if anything else comes up, like software or things that we need, we'll all discuss it because we are very conservative with the cash and we're going to use it smart. Before being selected to pitch their ideas to the panel of high-profile judges, the participants attended workshops led by faculty members and student leaders so they could refine their business plans. Nine out of 15 teams made it to the final round of the business competition. The Raptor Tank business competition was modeled after the Emmy Award-winning Shark Tank on ABC and was organized by the students and faculty of the Macklin Business Institute, MC Anactus, and the Rockville Business Program. The event was a huge success, so the organizers are confident the Raptor Tank will be back next year. For Country Report This Week, in Rockville, I'm Danielle Isteski. 
Local officials are gearing up for Cyber Montgomery on July 30th at the universities at Shady Grove. Congressman John Delaney, County Executive Ike Leggett, and County Council Member Hans Reamer are expected to welcome attendees to this networking event aimed at identifying opportunities in the cybersecurity sector. You can find information about this event on the Cyber Montgomery website. A new program is providing some MCPS students the opportunity to stay engaged in accelerated learning during the summer. MCPS TV has the story. A summer break opportunity to extend or reinforce learning is a valuable resource for students. And that's the goal for the new Early Learning Opportunity Summer Title I Enrichment Program, also known as ELO STEP. Over 200 rising third grade students from low income families are having this summer opportunity. This is really a pilot effort to see that not only are we engaging the students in a different instructional environment, but we're also reaching out to our parents. So that when we start to promote our magnet programs and advanced pathways, our parents are on board and that they are experiencing that with their children this summer. This free four-week program that follows the same infrastructure as the ELO sale program, where students receive free breakfast, lunch, and transportation, is being offered in 14 Title I schools and it is designed to nurture critical thinking skills and stimulate students who have been selected through a rigorous criteria. We also want to encourage our students by giving them this type of learning environment and showing them that they can persevere and that they can work hard and that there are academic peers for them in the magnet programs. They're all very engaged learners to get excited about everything we're doing. So that's been the most enjoyable thing to me is the level of enthusiasm and risk taking really that they're they're willing to take. How would they feel underwater? In order to prepare for this program and ensure that students are receiving valuable instruction, STEP teachers receive special training as well as specialized instructional materials. We're using resources that are recommended from the National Association for Gifted Children mentoring mathematical minds and this program allows students to engage in complex text and tasks that are aligned to Common Core while providing the scaffolds in place because we know they can do it but we still must support them. I enjoy working with them to see the interaction that they do, the collaboration that they do and they just work, it's a group of kids that work well together. Organizers hope to make the program available to more students next year. The Twinbrook Library is closing for a few months so the facility can be refreshed. The renovations include creating new conference rooms, rearranging the circulation and information service desks, modernizing the public restrooms, and of course, new paint and carpet. The library is expected to reopen by the end of the calendar year or in about four and a half months. Although the Twinbrook Library is closing on July 25th, the book drop will remain open for returns through August 13th. We want to remind you that Rockville Memorial and Aspen Hill Libraries are nearby branches. You can find more information about the library system on the county's website. Coming up next on County Report this week, a homecoming for the Washington Spirits World Cup superstars at the Maryland Soccerplex. And a Rockville hockey player is honored for her accomplishments on the ice. Stay with us. County Report this week is coming right back. Sixty minutes of physical activity a day and eating well can help get your child healthy. So keep them active and eating well every day. Get ideas, get involved, get going at letsmove.gov. That's letsmove.gov. So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket. And it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them. But, you know, she's putting them in the same basket. Again. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide-and-go-seek. 
Don't miss out on the fun at the 67th Annual Montgomery County Agricultural Fair. Celebrate and learn about our local agricultural community and have fun with loads of new entertainment. Hang out with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, brought to you by the Mid-Atlantic Federal Credit Union. Witness the talented Zuzu Acrobats featured on America's Got Talent. And watch the Car Killer Tank crush an RV inside the Xfinity Grandstand. Only $10 admission and kids 11 and under get in free every day. Visit mcagfair.com for more information. Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm Sonia Burke. What do you get when the Washington Spirit play the Seattle Reign after the World Cup? A sold-out homecoming celebration. The sound of Spirit supporters echoed throughout the stadium as fans lined up to welcome home their two superstars, Spirit defender Allie Krieger and goalkeeper Ashlyn Harris. It was their first appearance at a home game since they left to train for the USA women's national team. We wanted to win not only for ourselves and family and fans and our country, of course, um, and for U.S. soccer, but to help this league survive. To be able to be here tonight and to shake hands with little girls and high five and sign to give them, you know, dreams of doing the same thing I'm doing is pretty powerful. These Bethesda soccer club players walk the spirit team out and two of these girls were in Vancouver when the USA won the World Cup. It was amazing. I mean, but a lot, like 90% of the stadium was USA. Something they'll always remember, we'll always remember. And it was wonderful for them to see these female role models up on this wonderful stage you know across the world you know and to bring home the cup was just amazing we're super super proud the the world cup championship is phenomenal um, and for it to be 16 years since we since we've won and the way they came through the toughest group um, and the toughest side of the bracket to win is absolutely amazing the mitchell family traveled from washington north carolina to be at this game my kids really enjoy soccer we really got into the world cup um, they play all the time the World Cup stars did not suit up for this game as they continue to rest from their victory tour, but they did cheer their team on to a 3-0 victory over Seattle. They also want to win another championship. Um, this is, you know, my favorite club to play for. I'm ready to win a championship for this city, for this club, for these owners, and for these fans most importantly. You can find schedule and ticket information for the Spirit's remaining home games on the Washington Spirit website. Visit the MyMC Media website for more video coverage of the team and its star athletes. Another star athlete was in the spotlight this week in Rockville. That's where county council members recognized Haley Skarupa for her achievements on the ice. Take a look. This is a proclamation from the county council of Montgomery County, Maryland. Whereas there was little doubt several years ago that there was quite a future ahead for the freshman standout on the Wooten High School boys ice hockey team because after all, that freshman was a girl. And whereas even at that age, standing out was nothing new for Haley Scaropa, who grew up playing for the girls and boys teams with the Montgomery County Blue Devils at the Rockville Ice Arena and with the Washington Pride Junior Women's Team, and whereas the dashing forward had, has continued to play at the highest of levels in her three seasons at Boston College, scoring 77 points as a freshman and winning the Hockey East Rookie of the Year Award. And she was a member of the 2015 U.S. Women's National Team that won the gold medal in the IHF World Championships in Sweden. And whereas Haley's stature continues to grow as in June 2015, she was the fifth overall draft choice of the New York Riveters of the new National Women's Hockey League. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the County Council of Montgomery County, Maryland, is proud to honor Haley Scaropa and congratulates her on compiling such a list of achievements and such a young career and thanks her for making the entire Montgomery County community proud of her national and world accomplishments. It's presented today and signed by George Leventhal, the County Council President. Haley, congratulations. <laughs> I just want to say thank you so much for having me here today and recognizing this. It's quite an honor and I really appreciate it. Um, obviously, thank you to my parents for all of their support. I wouldn't be here without them. And uh, it's been an unbelievable experience. I love representing my country and it's been awesome. So thank you very much. With that, we close this edition of County Report This Week. Remember to like us on Facebook and to join us again at this time every week for a look at what's going on inside Montgomery County. 
We're going to leave you with some sights and sounds of the New Hampshire Avenue Partnership in Tacoma Park, where the Liz Lerman Dance Exchange brought community members together this weekend to explore and celebrate the corridor's past, present, and future. I'm Sonia Burke. Thank you for watching.